Hello and welcome to episode number 5 of Getting Started with Houdini. And in this one, we will be taking a look at beveling, booleaning, extrusion, groups, procedural selections, many interesting things like, you know, clipping, mirroring, and assembling our hard surface scene. We will learn a lot about how to operate with geometry, how to build the procedural systems. And first things first, I will showcase how to actually use all those things. And then we will proceed to build our hot surface thing. And of course, we will export it to USD, to Solaris and render it. And I will show you how to make the final render and save it to the disk. Final thing I want to say, if you're interested in getting the assets, please consider subscribing to the Patreon. If you're not really interested in subscriptions, you can get it from the Gumroad page, link in the description and the comments. So. Let's get started. All right, so first things first, let's save our project as getting started bevel boolean extrusion. Make sure we're auto saving and let's begin. So I first drop geometry, go inside and let's start with a box. So I'm just gonna show you a couple of things we can do with bevel first. So to drop a bevel, we can go to tab, start tapping bevel. You will see poly bevel, shift enter, and there we go. So how do we use it? Uh, we can actually press enter and then start with middle mouse button dragging along or indeed we could just do it like this in the uh, parameter section. So as you can see, there are exclusions that we will talk in a couple of seconds. Then there is offsetting, which basically controls the distance. Then does it slide on ring, uh, slides on ring edges or not, it's for uh, basically fixing problems with bevels, as is with collisions and limits. It's relatively simple operation, but sometimes it whacks out too much, so it will be a little bit problematic. Next up, the fillet is, uh, it can be round shape, it can be solid, crease, as you can see, currently it doesn't, uh, doesn't do anything, because if we increase divisions, you will see the difference. So solid is this one, crease is mostly very useful for subdivision surfaces. Chamfer, as the name suggests, does the chamfer. And of course, round is, well, what it says, it is round. Next up is the profile. We can actually use the ramp as a profile or a curve. And let's see what ramp can do. If we make this larger, you can see that I just move around and about and everything seems to change drastically. So now this is, uh, by default, the symmetrize is on and it's a little bit hard for me to control. I usually do it without the symmetrize because otherwise I'm getting confused what's going on. Uh, you know, your mileage may vary. However, that's it. So basically left mouse button, you create new points, hit the delete key to delete the points and there's that, so you can create your own profiles. And of course, you can decrease the number of divisions or increase the number of divisions to increase the kind of like perceived quality of the bevel. So uh, this is all good and fine and whatever, right? So how does it uh, perform when we're doing something procedurally? In fact, it does perform brilliantly. So I create a new box, uh, we will just make this hold down the E key so we can see the outline and hold the R key or just press this blue flag and we will see what's going on. So first things first, let's make the box, whoops, let's make the, this box kind of like a little bit smaller, a bit higher, right? So that when we Boolean things out of one another, we will see some results. So Boolean, I, Kind of stopped on the boolean a little bit previously but let's uh, let's see about what boolean can provide for us a little bit more in the detail i'll just deselect the poly bevel and let's talk about boolean as you can see when i boolean the okay so boolean currently does the operation of subtracting what it does it subtracts the b geometry out of a geometry as it says a minus b Again, we can invert that, of course, and naturally you can 
do this to invert, but you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. I don't think you'll be confused. Next up, we can union so that we actually have the geometry. That is one geometry instead of two different geometries. And let me show you what's the difference. So again, that's the poly bevel. Uh, increase the divisions, increase the distance a little bit. As you can see, currently our poly bevel, it treats the geometry as if they have the shared edge. However, if we just have our boxes merged and we do the poly bevel, you will see that indeed those boxes are just boxes that happen to have been floating around near each other and intersect, but they do not affect each other in any way. So union, it connects those geometries. And indeed, if we fly inside, we will see that it is now one geometry. Whereas in the merge, you'll see that we are, you know, there is just part of this box is inside of this box, but they are not connected in any way. So that's union. Next up, subtract. As you can see, polybevel does its thing already pretty good. And we have one box subtracted out of another box and everything works fine. Next up would be the shutter, which actually kind of intersects all those geometries and creates the seam lines. And as you can see, we have those two boxes with seam lines going here, and we have the poly bevel working procedurally. So basically what I'm saying is all of this working is working really, really fine. And as you can see, there is no problem whatsoever actually working with it. And it's updates on the fly. Everything just, everything is, you know, how would you expect it to work? Pretty much perfect. Anyway, so let's do the subtracts and let's get it to our Back to our polybevel, and as you can see, it looks kind of weird, but you get the point. Actually, it kind of looks like a sci-fi uh, corridor space pillow or, or something, you know. <laughs> maybe. I'm not saying it is, but maybe. Okay. Right. Let's create a grid and talk about uh, it a little bit. Let's talk about extrusion. So, as you can see, we have the grid. And extrusion says poly extrusion, again, P, E, X, T, R, shift, enter, and we're done. We can extrude it like this by moving our mouse. We can extrude it here, of course. Inset does what it says. It insets or outsets with the negative inset. And of course, the twist, again, does what it says. However, right now it doesn't look very good, does it? So we can increase the number of divisions and voila, we have some sort of spiraling geometry, I think. Okay. So if we, let's say, subdivide this, we'll see that we have some sort of, uh, I don't know, kind of motion graphic -y platform. If we make it rotate, you'll see that, you know, it's, uh, well, basically it's subdivided poly extruded thing with a twist and division. So that's that. Okay. Um, what else can it do? The polar extrude is it can actually, um, as you know from the previous videos, it cannot just extrude things. If we make the distance zero, if we make the inset zero as well, for example, we can basically transform the front itself. So what we have is another set of geometries. Let's decrease the twist to zero as well. It's just creating more geometry out of the geometry that we had previously. That's really, really useful. So uh, probably a bit more useful would be, for example, if we do the pole extrusion, if we, let's say, select a number of faces like this, or maybe control, shift to select more, control to deselect some, press enter, and then when extrude, you will see that we indeed can just do something like that. And of course we can poly bubble that and let's talk about the poly bevel exclusions. As you can see, currently, if we poly bevel things and I increase the distance, it will actually poly bevel for whatever reason, it will also poly bevel this. However, if we ignore the flat edges, it will start, well, as it's 
supposed to ignores the flat edges like these and uh, it just bevels the things that well basically need to bevel of course if we increase the roundness the divisions of the roundness you will see that we have pretty much perfect extrusion and bevel going on all right so interesting things um, that can we do together is actually we can just let's create another poly extrude and first we create another poly bevel so as you will see in a second we can actually not just bevel the primitives we can also bevel the points so the points will look something like this as you can see if we increase the number and if we tweak the crease number as you can see different things start happening so it's probably more useful when we have a little bit less rows and columns for example something like this we can do the diamond shape pretty easily However, if I get back to our rows and columns 10 by whoops, 10 by 10, okay, and go back to our pri pri primitives, um, you will see that if I decrease the distance a little bit, we can get the chamfer, we can get the solids, and this gives us a little bit of a geometric pattern that we can, in fact, extrude. So let's do that. Uh, usually the extrusion by default it does all the connected components. However, if we do the individual components, as you can see, and we create a little bit of offset, oops, not to overdo it, you will see that we indeed, let me just drop a null, we indeed have some sort of um, floor of a space station. Everything, everything is space station with me, okay. <laughs> all right, so let's decrease this. Uh, let's decrease that a little bit. Kind of like this, nope, kind of like, kind of like that. And finally, let's drop a normal. Uh, no, actually, before we normal, we can actually drop another poly bevel. And now we will bevel everything. So it has a nice little round edge. So when we are actually rendering it, it catches the reflections of incoming lights and it looks just fine. So. There you go. This is our space station floor and walls and everything else. <laughs> so uh, since the setup is uh, procedurally, you can see that we, whoops, uh, we can tweak with ease a lot of things here. We can go back to our bevel. We can tweak the distance, of course. Uh, we can tweak the number of divisions, of course. So, you know, sky's the limit here. Pretty easy way of creating those patterns, generating them, really useful. I love working like that, so there you go. And finally, uh, let's create some sort of more interesting geometry than we previously had before. So I'll just move it to the left. Actually, let's create, it. whoops, why didn't it do that? Anyway, let's create, it's a comment section, let's call it, um, examples all right and the color will be like this cool whoops all right so finally let's create a box and the box um i want the box to be a little bit elongated like this and now we will poly bevel now in this situation the only edges i want to bevel again i I click this cursor, right? Press the three key, so we actually are in the edge selection. Select these four. It's not like super procedural, but that's okay. Press enter, and of course, increase the distance, and don't forget to increase the divisions. I think 16 will be just fine. All right, next up, we do another poly bevel. However, this time around, we will poly bevel pretty much everything except for these edges. As you can see, they're uh, highlighted by the turquoise color, but we don't need them. So we will ignore those flat edges, but maximum normal edge will be like eight or 10 or something, just so that we are not actually touching these ones, right? You understand that, I hope. 
Okay, so again, eight divisions. Uh, so why am I doing the eight divisions and not nine or 11 or something? Usually it's better to have something that is divided by two or even by four or by eight, you get the point. Because uh, this will create less edges and less triangles when we are beveling and bullying things out of each other. It's more annoying when you're working with subdivisions because there should be quads everywhere and if we keep the divisions that are can be divided by two or by four, it will be relatively easier to work. Basically, it's just a habit. So, of course, I can make them 19, but just, just for me personally, I would rather have 16 than 19 or 24 or 32. You see what I'm saying? All right, so increase the distance a little bit. As you can see, this looks perfect. Now, what I want to do is I want to uh, boolean one thing out of one thing out of another. But before I do that, actually, I just remembered that let's let's first uh, change the viewport. As you can see, we can uh, hover over this viewport, hold down the space bar and press two for perspective, three for front, four for right and space bar five to check the view. Um, to check the UVs again, spacebar one perspective, two top, three front, four right. So I think we need to look at from the front. And what I want to do is move the bottom of our box somewhere here. Actually, let's enable the grid snapping. And it is perfectly situated on the ZX axis. So we will not have to move our geometry too much. Okay, so that's fine. I think we can do, we can make it a little bit fatter, if I'm being honest. Okay, this will be zero and this will be 0 0.5. So this looks, this looks fine. If, if, if anything, Houdini will allow us to tweak it later on, so that's really not a problem. Okay, so now I think we will have to start cutting things out of other things. And of course, we'll need the Boolean for that. Now, if we just Boolean one geometry out of another geometry, and we'll just somehow transform this box by scaling it. Let me see. First of all, let's enable this. Okay, and uh, let's start scaling our thing. So as you can see, let's press T, whoops, W, R, E. Okay, uh, if we scale, it works relatively well, right? However, the only thing I really do not like very much, if we just transform and scale down things like that, um, it will retain the angle and it will not look as natural. Let me see. It will not look as natural if we, whoops, if we cut it out. So the angle here, the radius, is not proportionate to the outer angle of this geometry. So again, that's just how transform works. That's how, just how scaling works. It's not a mistake. It's not a problem. It's just how it works. So um, it is for us to figure out how to do that in a better way. And there is a node that's called peak. What peak does, it actually inflates or indeed deflates geometry based on its normals. And it actually changes the radius proportionately to the inflation or deflation. So let's do something like this. And we can now get the peak into the geometry A and get our original geometry, which is this, into B. And now we can transform, we can scale it into the X axis. And as you can see, that's the result I was going for. As you can see, our radius is scaled proportionately as if we were working kind of like in a CAD application with curves instead of just, you know, polygons and transforming the polygons and whatnot. 
So that's that. Um, we can, of course, increase the peak a little bit. So we have a little bit of power geo or a little bit more. OK, I think this will do. All right. Now, again, poly bevel. Um, actually, this poly bevel we will use a bit later. However, let's just preview how it looks. And we will disable the pretty much everything outside of this outside of this edge. And we'll make it even smaller, make it round, kind of like this. So this looks pretty good. Again, let's call it bevel later. Oops later on. Okay, so what I want to do now is actually make little perforations on top of this. And let's do this by creating a tube. And the tube will be copied to a grid. We have done this previously. If you remember, copy two points. Tube, grid, everything, you know, pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. And of course, just Move it a little bit, create end caps. Let's first tweak the tube. Um, maybe increase the rows. By the way, I'm increasing the number of rows. It doesn't really matter. Maybe it will help with beveling later on, but not exactly gonna, it's, it's not a world changing. You can maybe have it on two, but just to be safe, sometimes I've increased it so that Boolean works a little bit better. And of course, poly bevel again. Um, you know what, actually we don't need polybevel for those tubes because only thing we will do is boolean those tubes out of this geometry. All right, so as you can see, uh, this is just too much. Okay, we copy the points. The grid is too big, of course. Let's make it smaller and let's start kind of positioning it. Let's see. Kind of like, kind of like this, I think. Again, if we start tweaking the grid, you will see that it is pretty much perfectly adjusting on the fly. Everything works as expected. And we can decrease the number of rows and columns so that it kind of fits better our idea. I think we can do it Again, a little bit smaller, kind of like this, kind of like that. Move it here. Let's see it from the top. Whoops, shift, uh, I mean spacebar two. All right, this looks okay. Spacebar one to get back into the perspective viewport. So all we gotta do is do another Boolean. Whoops. What's cool, going on? Boolean. All right. Finally, we Boolean B out of A and always C. Let's preview with our pebbles. This might take a little bit of time because we have a lot of geometry and we have the perforations. Everything is looking fine, I guess. We can tweak it a little bit later. However, as you can see, uh, I'm not sure if you see it on the YouTube due to compression, but let me just showcase so that you can actually see it better. Uh, drag and dropping a metallic, then going back to objects, uh, hold down the control, left mouse button on environment lights, choose the environment from Houdini PKHD right to go to the Skylight Garage. And you will see right now that our normals are out of whack. They're, they're, those are looking really, really bad because booleans and bevels usually mess up normals pretty bad. However, nothing we cannot fix. So if you start to kind of uh, try to fix those normals using the vertex angle and vertices, it will be still kind of weird even if you decrease the cusp angle. It's not going to help all that much. However, if you do the bi-phased area, you'll see that it pretty much alleviates any other problem. Uh, the face area, if you are coming from Blender or somewhere else, usually it's called 
something like weighted normals by face. So, you know, uh, cusp angle on the vertices by face area is, again, akin to weighted normals. So there's that. It fixes our problem. Now, the only thing I want to do now is actually increase the number of rows to, let's actually make it to Boolean, save, because, you know, who knows, it might, it might crash. Let's make it 10. Let's see what we got. Yep, that's pretty good. 16 here. Um, yeah, that's, that's looking nice. And maybe actually make the grid, whoops, make the grid a little bit smaller. All right. Okay. And move it from here. No, no, no. The other way. As you can see, it's a little bit on the slower side, but nothing critical. All right, okay, cool. Now we're having something. Now what I want to do is actually duplicate what we have on the left to the right. So how do we do that? Let's uh, create the bevels and uh, create the normals. Again, a little bit calculation. There's a lot of geometry going on right now because um, as you can see, all those little things, all those bevels have a lot of polygons, so it takes a little bit time to compute. So in fact, if I middle mouse button, we can see that we already have uh, more than two and a half hundred thousand polygons. But you know, it's not terrible. It's not not super super large or anything. It's just you know, it's fine. Houdini can handle more than that. It can handle millions of polygons without any problem. Anyway, so what we can do is uh, actually, as you can see, the polygonal modeling has a lot of shelf, has a lot of things, and one of those things that we will use is the clip thing. So let's do that. We create clip, drop it here, and the direction of the clip will be, let's see, in the z-axis. So zero one all right here we go however i know what you're saying you're like wait a minute where is our job <laughs> where is our geometry what's going on now the problem with clip is that it actually just clips the polygons and it doesn't take into account any connections or whatsoever so the boolean when it does the boolean it actually detriangulates the things here so as you might see, there is practically nothing that connects. Let me just disable the, uh, the viewing of the reflections. As you can see, this large N-gon on the right side pretty much does, has not, no connections whatsoever. It's only connected here, but it's kind of floats around and about on the right side, right? It's not connected to anything. So if we clip it, it loses the connection on the right. So is there a way to fix that? The easiest will be to actually use the divide, oops, divide node, and place it before the clip. It will triangulate all the nodes before we do anything. And as you can see, it fixes the problem. However, the divide should be placed after the normal because our normals are looking good here, right? They're looking good, everything is fine. Then we divide those, we do not uh, recompute the normals so they are unchanged if I press shift W you will see everything looks perfect still and then we clip it and it looks perfect however we only have one half of from it <laughs> uh, obviously we have to mirror it and the node is called mirror as you might have imagined again the direction will be one in z-axis Okay, so how do I know that? On the bottom left, you can see this tiny little nomen where I can just see where is Z, where is X, where is Y. Well, Y basically goes to uh, top to bottom, so that's not super hard to kind of get. Anyway, we mirrored it, and it's looking, let's say, looking pretty good. And let's start to create um, kind of like... Uh, little brackets that will go over this geometry. So we start with grid. Oops. We start with grid. 
Okay, so I'll press E here and we will just enable the view of the grid, Shift W to re-enable the view of polygons, size one by one, I think, whoops, <laughs> one by one, I think will be a good start. Let's see, maybe a little bit bigger like this. And the only thing we will need is to have a little bit, I think this will do. All right, so that's cool. Three rows, five columns. Let's see, maybe seven columns. Yep. Let's select those. Press T, move it up. That's a little bit too much maybe, but you know, we'll figure it out a bit later. Okay, now again, poly bevel. Now, be careful, previously we had selected some of the faces to move them around, right? And bevel thinks that we want to bevel only those faces as well, which is not correct, but it automatically created this group. I'll just select everything, hit delete, press enter, it selects everything, again, exclusions, ignore, and we need to just bevel these edges. A little bit of a distance, a lot of roundness, because you know, in, in the close-up, if we don't have enough, enough definition, you will see that it's kind of jaggy. But if we have, let's say, 16 divisions, it will look just fine on the render. Maybe 8 will look fine as well, but the more resolution. We're not, you know, we're not starving this geometry for polygons because we don't care how many geometry, uh, how many polygons we have because this is not too much. Anyway, let's do another poly extrude, and I'll just show you another option how you can do this. Uh, as you can see, the poly extrusion goes up or it goes down, but however, there is this labs thing that's called thicken. And it does what it says, and it can actually go both directions. Really useful and saves some time for you. And I kind of like it. Uh, you can use thicken even on curves, and then you can thicken those curves. So basically it's a uh, time saver for modeling with curves. I love it. Anyway, um, another poly bevel. This can have eight divisions. This will be really, really small. Exclude flat edges. And the only thing we need to bevel is this. So everything looks good. And really, 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 really small bevel just to hit those reflections. Okay, so what do we need? I think we can go back to edit and actually see how much can we how much can we push it mm, kind of like this I think we can um, compress the size a little bit move it down scale it up oops E R T okay move it down Again, E, scale it up. I'm just trying to see what will work. All right, let's try that. Again, normals. Again, face area vertices. And let's see. I'll select those both. Hold down the Alt, left mouse button. We have the merge. And that's that. You know what? I think it will actually look better if we have this grid smaller Right, if we have this grid smaller, let's transform that. Transform. And let's press E, make it smaller. RT, okay. Then we copy and transform. Drop down here, whoops. Enable, move, kind of like that. And now we can bevel normal and do everything that we want and merge. And of course, now it kind of is positioned incorrectly, but we can fix that relatively easy by just moving it like that. Okay, this looks kind of interesting. What else? Um, I think it will be really useful. Whoops, it will be really useful if we actually make 
some sort of cutouts so that w everyone will see that we actually bolt this geometry onto something and it's not just floating in the in the sky if we make a grid and we merge it with this you'll see that well first of all let's move the grid a little bit down doesn't really matter now okay it's not just you know floating around actually i think we'll need to fix the position of these things let's do that immediately it's a little bit higher no actually this will move lower shift three to be somewhat precise now i was wasting a little bit of time just to trying to match everything to the bottom but there is a better way which is called match size we can use the match size to basically justify y minimum to the zero as you can see here we go and we can justify again control c control v get rid of this useless transform and this match size it justifies the lowest part of this geometry to the kind of like zero 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 center of our world as you can see it now matches perfectly the only thing we have to do now is to see how much we need to edit our geometry here a little bit okay all right this looks fine um maybe just maybe make this a little bit larger i don't like this angle a little um, all that much so again scale this slightly like this and move it down like this all right okay okay finally i think i am happy with our result yeah this looks much better right so save this we have the match size everything's looking perfect and finally let's do a tube creates and we will just cut the tube out of our geometry where is it let me see yep somewhere somewhere from here okay yeah this is our geo let's do the cut first let's move okay let's go to the where is it top view and let's find the geometry center all right this looks good decrease the radius scale move it somewhere here enable the end caps increase the rows a little bit columns a lot like 32 maybe and of course boolean boolean a negative b and we have the result let me see yep that's the thing i want and the result is this now of course when whoops um i think it is probably better than a little bit too much let's increase the okay as you can see previously it was poly beveling those inside cuts as well and as you can see it causes the problem whoa and of course if we increase the normal angle everything will look fine all right so let's go back to our boolean and as you can see this looks a little bit you know it needs a little bit of a help so what do, we, what do we do is get our tube copy it um, let's do the radius scale somewhat smaller like a little bit smaller so we are bullying our thing our tube the other tube should go straight through it and what do we have to do is actually merge like this as you can see we're merging but uh yeah this doesn't look very very good so what we're gonna do is tweak this a little bit so it kind of looks like it's doing a job right let's see what we have all right so let's work on this 
what we need to do. You know, let's go to the background, press the D key and just display environment, disable that. It kind of is distracting. So, okay, so we select, press S key. We need to be in the primitive selection and call poly extrude. Uh, if you start um, holding down the shift and if you start scrolling your mouse wheel up and down, you will see that we are actually moving it inset and the distance of course is controlled by this. Again, Q, move it inside, Q, a little bit up, Q, shift, shift scroll, oops, shift scroll, Q, okay. I think this looks fine. And of course, of course, we will use our poly bevel. Again, don't forget to delete the group so that we can actually poly bevel everything. Exclude things we don't need. Increase the distance a little bit because we don't want it to be overwhelming just for rendering purposes. And something like this should be working fine. Let's actually see what we have. Yep. That's looking pretty, whoops. <laughs> That's looking pretty good. Right, finally, merge it. So we have a little bit of a problem. Tube has a little bit too much height. Let's decrease that right up until it stops. So the final thing of this right here will be to actually clip it. And this time around, I think we can do this where the, on the x-axis. One, zero. Here we go. Oops, my bad. We can clip it and then we can mirror it. Here we go. Oh, this is becoming entangled a little bit. All right, so let's detangle this. All right, uh, mirror, we one, zero, zero. Mirror will be one, zero, zero and Actually, negative one. Am I doing it right? Let's see. Okay, yep. Yeah. This looks perfect. Match size, merge, create some sort of geometry that will in fact be the thing that this container was kind of built for. Now, before um, before I do that, oh, actually, let's let's just keep going. Again, remesh. All right. So shift W to enable normal spec. So this is remeshing. It actually doesn't really matter. In fact, if the geometry is a little bit wacky, it will be fine as well. But I'll show you what I mean in a second. So we have this. Let's compress it slightly. Kind of like this. Move it about in the y-axis. It doesn't really matter how it is positioned because we will not really see it in the rendering. So next up. What we can do is shortest path. Uh, the shortest path is a really interesting node that creates somewhat interesting looking geometry. So first things first, we have to check the start points. I press the this cursor, select, press enter. Next up, we shall select some endpoints on the top. Again, press enter. As you can see, something is already happening. Now we can do from any start to any end or you know, enable, disable this, as you can see. And of course, there is the attribute paths cost. You can tweak that. So it kind of um, adjusts based on the air quotes cost of how much it costs to get from the point A to point B. And uh, what I think I want to do is to deselect some of, how many points do we have? Let's deselect some of these points and select a little bit more points from here. So we have kind of like um, alien tree. Let's see. Mm, yeah, this, this looks kind of all right. So all the wire, decrease the wire radi radius, obviously. This is too much. And subdivide a couple of times. 
drop normal. And normals doesn't really matter by vertex or whatever. And of course, merge it into other thing. And we have our little scene working fine. Again, um, the final thing I want to do is maybe create a couple of cuts here. Okay, let's do copy and transform. Move it here. And boolean that. So now we have two booleans. And this one will be this copy and transform. Control C, Control V. Get it here. Okay. All right, so, okay, I see what's happening. Uh, there is a little bit of a problem because after, let's see, after we're booleans and then start to actually working on those, let's do the copy transform after we do all, all of our poly bevel and extrusions so that it actually is not being confused to on which points and which primitives it should work. So basically the poly extrude, as, we, as you can see, it works on the groups that are numbered on primitives. And when we have done the copying, it got confused and start to work on different primitives. Long story short, we'll talk about that a little bit later when we'll do with attribute swaps and points and numbers and primitives and all that. But for now, all I wanna do is just create copies of our tube. So we have a little bit more of those cutouts. We can do a transform instead of copy. Let's do that. So we transform it to here. Kind of like perfect. However, we need to lower it down and compress it in the y-axis because otherwise it can create a little bit of a problem. Whoops. What I meant to do is get the original and the transform. We merge them and move it here delete this. So what I'm doing is creating another kind of like this button. So it kind of like uh, holds our geometry onto our grid. So as you can see, we have this and this is it. I press control S. I go back to the stage, I think. Let's try to render this. Uh, import all. This is all live. Uh, not really sure what's that's gonna happen. Hopefully it will not crash, basically. That's my only thing that I'm somewhat not exactly keen on is crashing. Anyway, let's get back to our uh, object context. And as you can see, we have this environment light. So for me personally, going back and forth in the environment light to tweak it is uh, annoying. So I'll delete it here. However, in the stage, instead of environment light, it basically will recreate it, but it's called dome light here. We press it. Hold it. Well, not press and hold, just go back to our Skylit Garage. Press accept. And here we go. Um, also, what I want to do, I think, is let's find the original grid. Yep, here we go. Here is our grid. I will delete grid here, but in stage, I can create another grid. And I can merge this into our scene and make this grid, uh, let's say, 10. So that's cool. All right. Um, currently, I'm rendering it on the CPU. And just we haven't really talked about the CPU and GPU rendering yet. But uh, the XPU engine is basically enables the GPU and the CPU. Well, what it says, it kind of has the CPU. However, if you do not have a super, super big video card, you can go to the CPU engine, go to um, image output, filters, and use the denoiser. If you don't have the NVIDIA optics denoiser that will denoise on the fly, you can just use the Intel open image denoiser that will denoise after the fact that it renders something. Anyway. Uh, since I'm going to use just the XPU engine, I don't need this right this time. All right, get them back. We have our dome lights. It's Skylight Garage. We can just rotate it a little bit. That's that's kind of like the beauty of using the XPU engine. It's for basic shaders 
it's relatively fast, I would say. Kind of enjoyable to use, really. Anyway, again, Control S, go to our object. Whoops. Um, the only thing I want to do, kind of, I kind of say it all the time, but <laughs> it really is what I want to do. Okay, thicken, poly bevel. So here, when we thicken, right? Let me see. Let me disable the lighting. All right, yes. Um, let's see. Uh, for whatever reason, I did not apparently use the poly bevel on those edges, on these edges, this and this. So let's do that. Let's see what we have. All right, so I'm gonna do the poly bevel. B, 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 E. Okay, and I am going to make the distance, but first we'll need to select edges, this, that, and this, and that. It will look a little bit better from my point of view. And of course, press enter, select the distance, make it round. Okay, let's see if it works. All right, everything without a hitch <laughs> from the first go. It's kind of amazing. Anyway, you will see that I fixed that, make the brackets look a little bit more rounded. And finally, let's control left click, create a camera, move it, whoops, okay, shake it, move it in before the rendering settings. And of course, now we can fly and zoom around using our camera and change the focal length. I like it a little bit more compressed and find the perfect rendering for our geometry, kind of like, I really want to, to see our geo to be a little bit more illuminated. So it kind of contra, oh, okay, yep. Kind of like this. All right, so there's that. We can just press save, go to the Houdini GL, disable the camera because now we can just fly around, but camera will be where we left it and finally we can do the render oops render to m play it will think for a couple of seconds load up the karma xpu engine and start rendering here we go and now it gives me a little bit of a problem with my steam i don't know what's happening anyway so we can save the frame make it png where is it JPEG PNG, here we go. Heap will be in where we saved our file. And of course you can go to your home folder and save it there and then work in Photoshop or at Affinity Photo or wherever you actually make the decisions on your images. So um, hopefully you had fun learning a lot about, you know, little bits of the procedural hot surface modeling uh, hopefully you will have as much fun as i did because i know that houdini isn't you know particularly celebrated for direct modeling for just modeling because procedural systems blah 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 everyone tries to stay direct modeling in other applications but as you might see houdini is really powerful in that regard as well so do not neglect it for modeling because my personal choice of modeling application is actually Houdini. I know it sounds weird, but maybe you'll find it in you that you enjoy doing this yourself as well. So hopefully you enjoyed watching this video. Um, I definitely enjoyed creating it. And thanks for watching. If you have comments, suggestions, don't forget to leave a comment below. Obviously, if you want to learn more, don't forget to subscribe, press the like button, do the whole YouTube thing, follow me on Twitter. Thanks for watching, hope you have a nice day and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.